We're here at the Sebring 13th annual event, and we wanted to hear a little more about something that we heard about only by a news release so far. In fact, we don't have anything to show you yet, but we're gonna find out some details and you're gonna see some pictures. I'm Dan Johnson, I'm talking with James Wiebe of Be Light Aircraft, and you've made a lot of single engine, ultralight, and ultralight, and a little bit larger than ultralight aircraft. You've been doing that for several years. Skydock most recently we've talked to you about, that was interesting. But you got something new in the works now. Tell me what that is and what's your plan for it, James? That's correct. What we've done is we've brought out a, a two-seat uh, experimental aircraft. And the very first question is why two-seat and why did it take so long? Uh, why two-seat? Because that's been the number one request of our entire fan base for the last, I think it's coming up on eight years now that we've been doing this. And I never wanted to do it until we had really figured out a way that we could make a huge impact in the market right from day one. Okay. When we got there, it was like, okay, it's now time to put it all down and make it happen and provide something they've never seen before. Those are some big words. So yeah, they are. I'm not doubting you because I've been impressed with what you've achieved so far, but convince me on it. Why is it so ground shaking? Okay, first of all, we absolutely wanted to break no new ground aerodynamically. We wanted to provide a dull, boring, flying airplane, but we wanted to look nostalgic so it evokes the looks of a J3 Cub. Okay. We wanted it all to be cut from CNC parts so it would fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. We got that accomplished. Okay. We also wanted to use lightweight materials that were also uh, affordable. And what we learned from carbon fiber is you can make a great light part, but it often ends up being a great, lightweight, expensive part. <laughs> so what we discovered is the going back, of carbon yeah, fiber, it seems. going back to honeycomb aluminum, we could make great lightweight parts that also cost less and do more. And that now, what way, do you mean by honeycombed aluminum? Everybody knows a kind of honeycomb because a cardboard box is sure. a kind of honeycomb. Well, that's funny. I've got a piece here. I've got a couple pieces here. It kind of looks like people, a cardboard box. Yeah, they call this corrugated aluminum, but it's just a facing piece of aluminum uh, on both sides along with, it's almost just tin foil on the inside. I can I can press it. Yeah, so but you try and break this, it. You can't edge break up it. Here. Uh, you know, this right along here, I mean, it, it feels like, 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 toilet paper or something. It oh my feels gosh. so thin. Yeah, yeah, and it yet, is. I'm guessing that this is, I mean, I can't even begin to squeeze that. So. Nor can you even begin to break it. We took and we made a, a vertical stabilizer out of this, clamped it sideways down to the table, loaded it up with 300 plus pounds of iron sideways, and couldn't break it. It was like I've never seen anything like this before. Now this is a sandwich kind of construction yes. then. And outer layer on both sides yeah. and then this stuff in the middle. And it's not new. It's been around for decades. I've heard I've been here today and people bring up the words like American Grumman and Yankee and Cheetah and they also bring up Jim Beatty and uh, all kinds of I things. I kind of remember that from some of Jim so Beatty's designs too. Like, so the, the technology in this is really cool. These facing skins are only 12 thousandths of an inch wow. thick. Uh, and so you end up with something here that, that looks like it should be heavy, and yet a whole square foot of it weighs less than six-tenths of a pound. Wow. And you can make a whole rib, and the rib weighs seven ounces, and it holds up 110 pounds. So you're buying a, I a buy big chunk of this stuff. Four by eight foot sheet. Four by eight foot sheet of it. And, and what's the method of fabricating that then? Just what kind of cutting? Uh, we're using our CNC machine. Uh, we have enough capacity that we can build quite a bit of airplane kit with just what we have in-house. So where is a component like this going to be used on the new airplane? Sure. I mentioned the ribs. We end up with a 35-pound wing uh, that's just brute strong. Uh, we also use it as the entire structure of the cabin, 29-pound oh. cabin that's made out of honeycomb aluminum. So you would be surrounded with this stuff? Exactly. Uh, okay. And then we use it for the formers on the rear fuselage. From a single 4x4 sheet, I cut all of the formers to build the rear fuselage, put on stringers, put on skin metal, and it looks like any other uh, uh, metal rear fuselage. Yeah, when you're and done, then, yeah, it's just a metal skin like people see on the outside of an airplane when they yeah. see it anyway. So. And then we're using it to cut the uh, vertical stabilizer and the rudder. The vertical stabilizer weighs and it goes way into the rear of the airplane, but the entire vertical stabilizer, which we loaded up over 300 pounds, oh, that, was the one. that okay. part weighs six pounds. Wow. So we end up with this incredibly light, very large two-seat airplane 
and then we priced it correctly too. That was the next big thing. Uh, we researched a lot of competitive product within the industry and we found that uh, uh, people were begging for a entry level two seat airplane with reasonable performance that wasn't priced up in the $20,000 range and up. And we came out with this product at the same price that we had our single seat pro coach. Is that right, really? The airframe kit, uh, you gotta buy some more stuff, but our airframe kit is $9,000. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so you gotta buy an engine, you gotta buy instruments and some other Landing things, of course. Landing gear, wheels, and brakes. Okay, so, but the, the, the fuselage body, including wings, the wings and the tail, tail and the, the control grand. surfaces. How does someone build this stuff? The ribs on the wing, they're all cut out so that we use tubular spars. You just slip the ribs over the tubular spars okay. and glue it in place with epoxy. We've been doing that with our wood and our other aluminum ribs for years. Put it where you want it, glue it, it's locked in place, it can't slip, it can't move, done. Then for the uh, cabin, what we did is we designed it so that all the pieces butt right up to each other, they jigsaw together, okay. so you end up with perfectly square sides and corners. And then in the interior of each one of those corners, we're using plain old angle aluminum with rivets that go all the way through the structure and an anchor Both wash Both sides on the back. of this then, okay. Yep, all a, the way through. And, a, and so a, pop, a pop rivet's type though. Pop rivet. But with a, a backing plate on it. Exactly, it's a backing rivet on it. Backing rivet they call it, okay. Yes. Give me your best forecast of what you think a build time will be. 400 hours. 400 hours. We built the first wing in about 40 man hours and truly it's not hard to do. Everything slips in place, it was a perfect fit, easy. Well, we're taking a different tact with the CAD that helps with the build experience. All right, tell me about it. The 3D files are available to the builder. Uh -huh. Now, that doesn't mean you can go in and edit them, but what it does mean is, is that you can load them, put a free viewer on your computer, and if you have a question as to how something's put together, you can fly into that sub-assembly or part. What, what kind of engines are you going to put on it? Sure. There's, there's several really good choices that are out there. The most obvious choice that's very economical is the Rotax 582. It's rated at 65 horsepower and on an 850 Proven pound gross. for years and years and years. 30, 40,000 of them built. They just did new tooling for them at the factory. They've committed to that engine for the long time. Rotax came by and talked to me today and answered every question that I had. Good for Rotax. There are also, uh, there's also another our Hearth has great engines, the 3202, the 3203, the 3502, the 3503. Uh, the competitors to the 582, less expensive, similar weights, uh, similar horsepowers, great track record in the field, all good two-stroke solutions. Then as you get to the fringes, the old HKS 700E is very mm -hmm. interesting as a four-stroke. It's a great little engine. I've flown with that on a number of airplanes. I yeah. loved it. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. D-weight with a two-stroke is coming in at 380, and with a four-stroke <laughs> is coming in at 430. Is that right? Those are yeah. very low numbers. Low weight means a less expensive airplane, means that you can build a lot of strength into a smaller structure, means that you can use a smaller engine, means that you can get the same or actually better, you know this, better takeoff performance. Oh yeah, right. And better climb performance. Light is right in aviation. And uh, by the time you end up with the right four-stroke engine, you're looking at cruise uh, fuel consumptions below three gallons an hour at a pretty decent clip. What do you think? What do you, what do you imagine the, or what are you projecting the performance will On a four-stroke, uh, uh, comfortable cruise around 85 to 90 at three gallons per hour. Not uh, miles No, an that's hour. miles per miles hour. Miles an hour, okay. So if somebody was convinced and said, well, gosh, that, that uh, Pipper sounds like that's a pretty interesting machine, but you know, they're, they're still in the developmental phase of it, when could they get one? When, when are you anticipating this could get to market, James? Uh, we're planning to be shipping our product right around the time that Sun and Fun comes oh, really? around. Really? We're moving very rapidly. Okay, that's not far away from where we're sitting right now. I know, so. it's 90 days in the future. Okay, so this is a, this is a 2017 project. Then. All the way. Uh, um, for those that, uh, we've, we've covered a lot of questions. I hope we've gotten most of them that people might be walking up to you here at your booth and asking you. But for those that still have more or want to take some action, where do we send them on the web? Oh, please come to our website, Belite, B-E-L-I-T-E, aircraft.com. And uh, they can sign up for a newsletter there that you send yeah. out with some regularity, I know. Yeah, something and too the, often, but we do it anyway. Well, I don't, think, I don't think too often is the right word. You can always hit the delete key, so. <laughs> 
Once again, VLightAircraft.com, and you can find lots of stuff about the various projects that we've covered from VLight Aircraft and VLight Electronics, and lots of other affordable aviation products on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining James Weedby and myself here at Sebring.